years, um, it has been uh, my privilege to be able to teach virtually, sit in front of uh, the computer monitor and uh, greet my students as they, they come into the virtual classroom. But you know, I watch people. They come into human design, they learn a little bit of this, they learn a little bit of that. Then I watch them. And they're not operating correctly. I mean, they're not. And it's not like that is me sitting in judgment of them. It's simply that, you know, they're still not self. What to do? What to do? It's the power of the mind. You know, your mind holds you hostage all the time. And I see how in these beings there is this part of them, this earnestness, you know, in really wanting uh, to do something with their lives. And at the same time, you know, they, they have been through whatever the knowledge could reveal to them of their design and recognize its inherent truth. They want to do something about it. They don't. They dabble. Sort of. Sort of. You see, if you don't live it, it's the commitment to the experiment. It isn't about anything else. It's about making the commitment to the experiment. And let your mind do whatever your mind does, but you make the commitment to the experiment because otherwise there's no value in any of this for you. There isn't. It's extraordinary to learn human design as you live your own. Because then you take in the information in the way it's intended to be taken in that instead of the details that you're looking at now is the acute perception that can come later. How different your understanding of the mechanics when you yourself are mechanically correct. But to live it, 